Praise the Lord, everyone. For today's portion, we'll divide it into two parts. First, we'll read few verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And later on, if we complete this, we'll start with chapter 3. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I will read 14 to 17. You can read in your Bible along with me. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savour of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are savour of death unto death and to the other savour of life unto life. And who is sufficient of this thing, for this thing? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and speak with us. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, giving us the privilege to study from thy word from 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and chapter 3 as we begin. Lord, I pray for myself. Take full charge of me, Lord. And every word uttered, it may the Holy Spirit may put the words within my mouth. And uh, it may be for your glory and for edification of every one of us. And give us the grace to not only receive the word, but to be obedient to your word. Thank you. Your word is a lamp and light unto our path. In the entrance of thy word giveth light. So we commit thy word into your hand. Speak with all of us. Take care of this Zoom application. It may work properly from everyone's hand. Thank you once again for your faithfulness all this time. Through the Bible study, you have blessed us, spoken with us. Today also you speak with us. And we can say, speak Lord, for thy servant here. So bless thy word in precious, most worthy name, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So let me give me the share option. Okay, so last time we were here, Paul was thankful uh, to Thankful for the privilege of pleasing God in Christ. And we saw that we were a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are saved and those also perishing. And we also saw from 1 Peter also that verse 1 Peter 2, 6 and 8 there also reminds that some of them will be saved. It's a great joy for them. Lord is precious. But all of them are not going to be saved, which we know from the word of God. And... Uh, we have to be a good fragrance so that many may come to the saving knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ and they may not perish. That's the Lord has given us the privilege to be a fragrance of Him. So we saw during that procession there were victors uh, who symbolized the victory and uh, both of them, they had the aroma or the fragrance of the incense which was burning, the garlands with the flowers, the smell was coming. But for one of them who were victors, it was a great joy because it was a victory. But there were also prisoners who were coming with that. They also smelled the same aroma, but they were destined to death. Same way, we may be a fragrance to the one who will accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In others, they will reject the word of God. So we are a fragrance for God. Also remember, once again, I want to draw your attention toward that uh, small example I had given of, of a perfume. You know, we buy our favorite uh, perfume and there are three different strengths of the perfume, odor, toilet, cologne, and perfume. Now, one of them is very less price, order toilet, and colon is little more price. 
and perfume is much more higher price than both of them. And in order to buy perfume, uh, we have to spend a lot of money. That means we have to pay, pay a great price. Now, if we want to be a fragrance of Christ, like a perfume, we have to pay a great price. We are not talking about money over here now. Price is the work of cross done in my life and being obedient to the word of God. Two things, work of the cross being done in my life and obedience to the word of God. That will, the price we pray, more the price we pray, the more we will be like perfume. If we don't pay that price, that our fragrance or the aroma to others will be of no use at all or maybe little use. So I want to ask you today, what type of aroma are you or fragrance? Are you like an open toilet or a uh, cologne or as a person? You know? And I believe most of the time we don't want cross in our life. That's the most difficult, you know. Every day we have to take the cross and follow. And that's what we don't like. We only say, Lord Jesus, you only have to go to the cross, die for my sin, that's enough, you know. But when the cross, when we talk about the cross, it, people don't like it, you know. But if you want to be a strong fragrance and aroma for the, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is in you to give the gospel of Christ, you have to pay the price. Are you ready to pay the price? If you are ready to the, pay the price, then the Lord will use you as a great fragrance of Christ to God. Again, I had reminded you that this part, fragrance of Christ to God, you know, to God only Christ is the greatest fragrance or He is everything. So I, I just, pen down few things of uh, Brother Austin Sparks and what he says about Christ. He says Christ is in all the thought and ways of God. Christ is in all the thoughts and ways of God. Christ is central. Christ is supreme. Everything which has to do with the realization of God's purpose Okay, everything which has to do with the realization of God's purpose in creating man and this world and its universe, it's a matter of knowing God in Christ, which of course means knowing Christ. Every aspect and detail of God's will, God's way, God's end is a matter of knowing Lord Jesus Christ. All progress as of all life rests upon that and that is knowing Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ is very much important in our life. God will only see is there Christ in you or not. Maybe I hope if those who don't understand especially in Gujarati, just unmute and let me know. So those things we can translate so you may be able to understand. So remember, Christ is everything for God. Now let's go to the next fifth part. And here we see, we saw this and now Paul was thankful for the privilege of the power in Christ. And then verse 16b and 17, it says, who, uh, that is in NASB, I believe, uh, who is dedicated for these things. We are not many, we are not like many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as, God, as, but as from God, we speak in Christ in the sight of God. So the privilege, Paul was thankful for the privilege the Lord had given him, and that was the power in Christ. He was so much thankful, you know, so here, Paul writes in uh, 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 2 Corinthians chapter 12, very famous word, uh, chapter in verse 10, 2 Corinthians 
chapter 12 in verse 10. This is what Paul is writing. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecution, with difficulties. He wants to go through all these stages for Christ's sake. Why? For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, the privilege of the power in Christ is when we are weak. Then only Christ will become strong in us. Paul said, my power in Christ is my weakness. When I am weak, the power of Christ will rest upon me. Now, he says that there are many false teachers or apostles, who so-called apostles had come to the Corinth church and they were peddling the word of God. What is the meaning of peddling? Here, I don't know what is in... Uh, for they corrupt the word of God. That's in King James Version. But they were paddling the word of God, corrupt the word of God. So the meaning of paddling is a con artist. One who is a con artist, a street hawker, who cleverly deceives unwary buyers, you know, in purchasing cheap imitation of the real thing. You know, when we go to Manhattan uh, near Macy's, there are a lot of cheap imitations of handbags and perfumes and everything. Those are the street hawkers and they are very so clever to deceive people. Same way, these teachers or the so-called apostles who had come in the church of Corinth, they were peddling the word of God. But as from C, but he says, we are not like that. He says, we are not like that. We do not corrupt the word of God. They wanted to bring Judaism mixing with Christianity. And that Paul says, no, we are the one who give the word very sincerely. And see, that's why in 1 Corinthians 1 and 17, 1 Corinthians 1 and 17, Paul writes, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but he said to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non effect. Yes, not the wisdom of men. Otherwise, the cross of Christ will have no effect. That was his birth. He wanted to preach in the power of Christ. And that's why he said, I would rather be a weak person, you know. I would go through all the afflictions in which I want to go. So Paul found his way out of this discouragement because he was focusing on his privileges instead of focusing on his discouragement because he was discouraged because the Corinthian believer, those so-called apostles or the false teachers had come and they were drawing all the believers in Corinth towards them. So he was taking away his eyesight from that discouragement and he was focusing on the privileges he has instead of the problems. And those privileges is through the king of king in whom he can have triumph. And he could influence those Corinthian believers for eternity. And he would please God. So here we see that was the privilege of power in Christ. Paul was thankful. So as we also we have to learn one thing, you know, we have to be always led by the Spirit of God. Paul was thankful for the privilege of the promise of victory in Christ. As I told you, we always have victory in Christ, not by our own self. We will always fail. We will always be defeated because Satan is much more powerful than us. And we saw so many things in that. Paul was thankful for the privilege of having influence for Christ. Paul was thankful for the privilege of pleasing God in Christ. And then Paul was thankful for the privilege of the power in Christ. So here we end 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 17. 
end we will go to uh, back to second corinthian chapter 3 and we'll read first five verses so let's go let me uh, i'm going to stop this sharing and then we'll come back again so second corinthian chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 i'm going to read you follow in your bible do we begin again to comment ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men for as much ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living god not in the tables of stone but in fleshly tables of the heart and such trust have we through christ to god word not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god may the lord bless us and speak with us again i am going to share from the okay so we read this second corinthian chapter 3 you can see that no one called okay so you have to give me sharing i okay now i think you can see all right now you can see right yes okay so we saw we already read here now i go to the second slide i divided into that first of all we see a word of examination and that we see from verses 1 to 5 and two things question was asked and that question was all real letters all acts okay do we need to employ promotional tactics that was the first question all asked and then the second is said do we need to exchange personal testimonies now a question do we need to employ promotional tactics he says do we mark that word you know do we begin again mark that word again in your bible do we begin again to commend ourselves the word again it suggests that this very charge had already been brought against him again are you bringing this again why again and again so that's what paul was saying why are you bringing it again and again then paul answers them very sarcastically you know he says see are you want to know from me the one who founded and established the corinth church do you want a commendation from me do you want that commendation from me the one who founded and established your church do you need some kind of documents because those false apostles and teachers brought some false documents showing that they needed some kind of document to show them oh this people have sent us and we are the true apostles and not paul he says do you want me to bring such document to authenticate myself with you corinthian believer paul said i am a competent minister because god has appointed me god has appointed me and see to preach the gospel and god had really appointed paul to preach the gospel acts chapter 26 and verse 16 acts 26 16 this is the testimony which paul is giving before herod he says 
verse 16 but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which i will appear unto thee so he is telling to the corinthian believer i am a competent minister i don't need any uh, commendation from you you know recommendation from from other people to bring it to you and the word he says uh, do you he says again do you need to comment ourselves the word comment means is it in other meaning of it is do you want me to introduce you again do you want me to introduce to you again and paul was saying i do really do i need to reintroduce myself to you O Corinthians, do you not know me well enough now? Have we not gone all together all this time? Is it really necessary for me, Paul, to start all over again and to prove to you what kind of man I am? They had known him, you know. He had ministered among them at least for 18 months. Acts chapter 18, verse 11, he was there for almost 18 months. First, he started preaching among the Jewish people, but they rejected him. And then he says, because you are rejecting me, I'm going to the Gentiles. And then he started going to the Gentiles. So most of the believers who had accepted Jesus in the church of Corinth, they were from the pagan religion. They were a pagan background. Yes, there were a few Jewish people also. But most of them were from the pagan background. And Paul says that I have taught you, you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I have been with you teaching, preaching, fellowshipping with you. I have prayed with you. I have loved you. I have shed tears for you. All these things I have done. Now you want me to start all over again and you want me to introduce you because other teachers or the false apostles have come bringing some letter and telling that they have come from Jerusalem or from some important person and these are the letters which we are bringing to you. Paul says, what happened to you, Corinthian believer? He's saying all this thing, do you need a promotional tactic? Do you need that I should introduce myself again to you? Then second part says, do we need to exchange personal testimonies, you know, because as I said, some, some others who had come over there, they must have brought some letters from Jerusalem and a letter of com commendation. But mark that word, which I was looking at it, you know, in the first verse, he says, do we again that we saw again to commend ourselves or need we? as others some that means others means those false apostles or teachers who had brought epistles of commendation a letter of commendation do you want me also to give you like that and it says see mark that two phrase you know as some other epistles of commendation to you that means to you corinthian believer brought we have brought it from jerusalem or from those who are known, maybe some Judaizer who wanted to bring problem in the uh, testimony with the testimony of Paul or in the ministry of Paul or what he has taught them. They must have brought a letter to you, to you, Corinthian. But then again, see what he says, or letters of commendation from you. He says, not only that I have, we have brought this letter of commendation from those in Jerusalem, so you may accept us. But is what they are saying, we also want a letter of commendation from you too. Why you too? Because they knew that in the time to come, they will find out that these are not the right people who have brought letters. They think they are something. They are not the right people. So if while they are there and when they get a letter from you, if the Corinthian would have given a rep, oh, these people are good and this and that, then when the Corinthian believer would find out that these people are not right, what they would do? They would run away from there. But at the same time, now they will have two commendation letters, one from the Jerusalem 
and one also from the Corinthian believer also, he says from you. So they would go to other place and they would show both of them. Oh, we have a letter from Jerusalem also and see, Corinthian believer also gave us a letter. Such people are there in the church nowadays. We have to be very careful. So this, it reminds us that they brought such ends. See Galatians 1, Galatians chapter 1. There were there and the people were like that in Galatians. Paul also write chapter 1, 7 to 9. Galatians 1, 7 to 9. And we said before, I say unto now, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then ye have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade man or God? Or, oh, well, sorry, let me read. Apple, from, yeah, that's not Galatians 1. Oh, 7 to 9, sorry, I was reading 9 and 10, which is not another, but there would be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. See, he's writing to Corinthian believers, I mean, Galatian believers also, that there also some people will come and they will pervert, trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. In verse 8, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Then Paul says, for do I now persuade men or God? I am not persuading. Do, do you want me to persuade God and men? He says, do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I should not be the servant of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful. There are so many wrong doctrine being taught in different parts of the world by different Christian evangelists or pastors or teachers. And that's why we have to be very careful. These people who thought they would be something came to Corinth and Paul was warning them. Also, Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15 in verse 24, Acts 15 and 24. For as much as we have heard that certain which came out from us have troubled you with words, see, subverting your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law. To him to whom we gave no such commandment. See, we gave no such commandment. They are not from us if they are doing that and teaching you that you should be circumcised and keep the law. So this must have been Judaizer who have come from Jerusalem. And they are taking away these believers away from Paul. Then Paul is answers that you don't need any commendation from me. Then Paul answers that question, do we need to employ promotional tactics or do we need to exchange personal testimony? Then he answers this question in verse 2 to 5. In 2 to 3, we see Paul's real letter. What is the Paul's real letter, you know, a letter of commendation? Because they were looking for letter of commendation. Paul says, you are want letter of commendation, verse 2, to the Corinthian, written in Paul's soul, you know. He says, written in Paul's soul, the Corinthian themselves were all the letters he needed. You Corinthian believers are my letter. You are my letter. They were written in Paul's soul. He says, ye are our epistle in our hearts known and read of all men. Now other false apostles and preachers might need to establish their credibility with distant churches like Corinthian church by bringing letters of recommendation with them in their hands. Paul's letter was in his heart. He didn't write anything, you know. He says, you are in my heart. You are my letter. You are my epistle. 
So Paul's letter was written in his heart, a heart which had gone out to the Corinth in their lost estate. He wooed them, he won them for Christ, and had seen their very lives transformed. Their changed lives were all the letter he would ever need with them. He says, your changed life is the real letter. I don't need somebody to write and recommend me, go to Corinthian and minister over there. No, those unsaved in Corinth, those, that means not in the church of Corinth, but they were outside because most of them were of pagan religion. They were unsaved. So unsaved in Corinth could notice their transformed life. Those who were the believers in Corinth came out from pagan religion. In their life, they could see a different, a transformation. And that is the letter itself. He says, what more letter do you want me to give you, you know? And pagans could read Paul's letter of commendation as they looked at the Christian believers. Once they were idolaters, they were immoral pagans, but now a model of righteousness and morally correct behavior. They could see that. Paul says, I don't need any letter. You are my letter, you know. You are my epistle. What do we learn from this, you know? Our lives should be likewise known and read of all men. We have always heard about this. We should be a reading Bible, you know. No matter how much we preach to other people about God, talk about gospel or encourage somebody by the word of God. But if our actions, our attitude, our behavior, our conduct is not according to the word of God, they will not accept it. They have to read us, to see Christ in us. And that, I said, we have to pay a price for it. Are we like that? Maybe uh, at those who are working at, at, this, at their workplace, those who are in college, in school, at their uh, school or college, or in your neighborhood, or in your home, are people able to read us and see Christ in us? Paul was saying, you are my letters. Others see you. And brothers and sisters, this is a very much important that we should be a reading Bible to other people. You know, the more of Christ they have to see in us. And this is very much important. Let me bring an example. Uh, somebody had written this and maybe a God servant is there who wrote it and with a lot of uh, prayer he must have uh, written this. Uh, he talks about Jonah, that how he was a living epistle. And from that we will learn what it means that our life should be a living epistle of Lord Jesus Christ. He says, when Jonah marched through the street of Nineveh, sounding out the message of doom. You know, he was saying, go and tell Nineveh, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people repented. Perhaps the real message was Jonah himself. You know, Jonah himself was the real message. He had been three days and three nights in Wales Valley. What he himself called the valley of hell, Jonah chapter 2 and 2, he says, I was in the valley of hell. Now, when he was in the belly of hell for three days, the gastric juices of the whale had doubtless wrought havoc on his exposed flesh. So he was there, but on his those, these uh, ex, uh, gastric juices which were in the whale must have gone on his flesh and his exposed the flesh. And we can believe, we can believe that his face was like bruised, or terror to look unto. Now when he was going and preaching, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown, we can believe that his face was so much that he became an epistle of what he was preaching. He was, he, he, they could see in him what he was preaching, you know, because people took one look at him and heeded his warning. People looked at him the, his face and he was because he was three days there his face must have become exposed to that thing and it must be become so red and something must have happened when then they could see oh he's in living epistle why people took 
Then because of that, people took one look at him and heeded his warning. Why? Because when they saw his face and, his, and, and the way he looked like it, people re immediately realized that he is a sinner and he must have done something wrong and see how God has punished, you know. So looking at him and his message, they repented. He became a living epistle of what God had done because of sin, of disobedience. But people also saw and he says, God will punish like this person if you don't repent. And they repented. And they said, it is everything written on him. We don't want to be like him. We want to repent. So, but thing is that when he was preaching, he did not see the message, second message, which was in him. First message was, if you don't repent, see what happened to me. You also, if you don't repent, you are all going to die. And they saw him, he became an epistle and of what would happen and they all repented. But what Jonah did not know that he was an epistle for another thing is that God pardons sinner. If God would have killed Jonah, he would have died, he wouldn't have come. But God was gracious to him. He pardoned uh, uh, Jonah and they could see beyond Lord's judgment. Lord see, uh, they saw the grace of God. They saw that God will pardon and they all repented. So Jonah became an epistle of two things. If you don't repent, <laughs> you will all die 40 days. But at the same time says, oh, oh, God did not kill Jonah. So if we repent, we'll still be alive because he pardons sin. So Jonah was an epistle of both the judgment which would come upon them and how God would pardon them. Same way, we are also, as we are a fragrance through us. Fragrance is to those who perish, it is death to them, but others will be saved. We have to be an epistle of Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how much you are epistle for me. Every day, I am short of it. You know, I have to be more like Lord Jesus Christ. They have to see more of Lord Jesus Christ. But many things, you know, uh, so recently uh, some thoughts were coming in my mind. I know one person, I'm not talking about give the name, but you may not even know that person also. And most of the time I call that person all the time because he's by himself, lonely and all that, you know. And I was thinking that that person calls other people, but he never calls me, you know. And I always have to call because I mean, my thought is that he's lonely. Let me talk with him. He should not feel lonely, you know. Then I was thinking that why I have to call all the time, you know, let him call, I won't call. Then the thought came into my mind, you know, Sudhir, you are calling him because he's lonely, right? And now you are thinking because he's not calling. So what would have Christ done if you would have been there? Would he have asked himself, oh, he's not calling, so I should not call? I said, no, you would have not done that. You would have called all the time, even if you would have not called. So I thought that, Lord, your life is not in me yet, you know. I am so short. I should not even have thought of this, that why should I call? As if Christ would have been there, if I would have manifested Christ, this thought would have never come to me. I am not an epistle of full Christ, a little bit of Christ. What about you, you know? Corinthian believer Lord Paul was saying, you are my epistle. You see, others are looking at it. Everything is written on you. How the Lord has worked. I don't need a letter or an epistle or a commendation from other people. No. It says, you, you are written in my soul. And then not only that, he says, but let me give you another thought which I see. This is one. I would request um, if, um, if it is possible, Brother Jolly Bhai, to translate, if it is possible, and if somebody says from Gujarati speaking that they don't understand. Now we saw Paul's real letter, and we saw that uh, it was uh, in the Paul's heart. Uh, it was in Paul's soul, uh, written in Paul's soul. And now uh, we see what was written in Paul's soul and how we have to be. Our lives should be likewise be known and read of all men. We should be a reading Bible. True. Now, 
read this the world you read with me as i read it the world needs to see the gospel lived out in our lives now an any johnson flint wrote in her poem that poem was hands and feet for him what she wrote we are the only bible we are the only bible the careless world will read are you the only bible the careless world will read then she writes in the poem again hands and feet we are the sinners gospel are we the sinners gospel they miss they see everything written in her from genesis to revelation from matthew to revelation do they read the gospel sinners gospel are we we are the scoffers creed not the creed written by men creed from the bible we are the lord's last message are we written in deed and word what if the type be crooked what if the print be blurred that means if our life is crooked if the print is blurred how they will be seeing the only bible in us how they will be able to see the sinner's gospel how will they will be able to see the scoffer's creed we are the last message i hope everybody understands if anybody doesn't understand we can translate it if not i will go further it's okay with everybody i hope so right please please translate in gujarati okay so jolly bhai if you could see this and translate what should be read and okay uh, uh, the poem right uh, yeah hands and feet for him up tena hatho ane tena pago we are the only bible apne ek apne fakt ek apne bible ek kulu bible che je logo bible vaatta nahi jeo ne suvarta jeo suvarta sambharta nahi teo ne mate apne ek bible che logo mate ane te che ke je 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 duniya je jagat ke je bilkul befikar che careless befikar ke vaatse ane we are the sinners gospel apne papiyo ne mate suvarta che apne apne pote we are the scoffers creed jo maskari kare che te onu vishwas namu apne che we are our lord's last message apna prabhu no chello sandesho te apne che chello chevat to sandesho written in deed and word ane e je sandesho che te apna apni bolva ma apni apna shabdo ma ane apna karyo ma e e chello sandesho prabhu no che what if the title crooked jo e lakhan etle e je lipi ek aksharo jo vaaka hoy ane jo e chap 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 kam e ब्लड एटू हो क्लियर ना हो चोखू ना हो तो पी के संदेशों चोखो स्पष्ट मान पड़े सो देट मीन्स वी आर दिस देट मीन्स टॉकिंग अबाउट अस वी आर वी आर and if we are crooked and if our life is crooked in life is blurred how can we give the sinners gospel how can we be scoffers creed how can we be the lord's last message we cannot so paul says to the corinthian you are written in my soul then we see not only it is written in paul's soul but it is written by god's spirit in verse 3 uh, second corinthian let's go back in the king Three and verse three. As much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but spirit of the living God, not in the tables of stone, but in the table of the heart. So it is written by God. See, it says it has been written by God. It's uh, it, it is, but with the spirit of the living God. Is written by the spirit of the living God. So. Paul's letter were written on his soul, but they were also written by God's spirit. It was written by God's spirit, and uh, 
uh, the Corinthian believer were not only Paul's own convert, they were not Paul's own convert or the handwriting of his heart. The only letter of re recommendation he ever needed with them, but they were also the epistle of which Christ himself was the author. Not only Paul, but Christ worked through him. Paul wrote, but it was the Christ was the author of what he wrote to them. And the conversion of the Corinthian was wrought by God himself through the ministry of Paul. Paul's ministry was there, but the conversion of the Corinthian were wrought by Christ himself, by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of the living God was the pen. See, the Spirit of the living God was pen uh, in the hand of Paul. And they, that is the Corinthian believer, were the parchment. You know, parchment, that was, was one kind of leather, I believe it was used to write the uh, Paul used to write on the parchment, all these epistles which you see were written on parchment. And he says that parchment, you are the Corinthian pillar, you are the parchment, on you it has been written. Paul wrote on you, you are the parchment, but Christ was the author. Christ was the author. So Paul's mind soars back to the Old Testament when God literally wrote with his finger on the tablet of stone. Now Paul says those were written uh, on the tablet of stone, but that was nothing Paul says, you know. Paul declares compared to what has happened to you Corinthian believer, a man, he says a man could write with pen and ink, but only Lord Jesus Christ can write with the Spirit of God. The Lord has written in you, not with pen and ink, but by the Spirit of God, and what a writing it is. You can see it from your own life. The message was lived out in terms of throbbing and vibrant human life of, of Paul, of, of those people who were in, in Corinth. A message, they were a message of soul saving, life transforming, and power of gospel as Paul preached to them. So the current so the Corinthian or the saints in Corinth, they became a living epistle and were all the letters recommended which Paul needed. Now one thing let me ask uh, let me remind you that there are many places where Paul himself wrote a letter of commendation recommended. I will give two examples, not more because there are few of them. Uh, see Romans chapter 16. Romans 16. So they used to write a letter of commendation, but here Paul says, you are my commendation, you are my epistle, I don't need any letter. Uh, chapter 16 and verse, Romans 16 and verse 1. It says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is, a, I commend you. So commendation was given uh, for Phoebe. Also in Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15 and verse 23 to 27, it's a long passage, but I don't know, let me see. Acts 15, 23 to, and they wrote by them after this manner, the apostle and the elders brothers sending greeting unto them, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria for as much as we have heard so they also wrote a letter, but see Acts chapter 18, let's go to Acts 18, Acts 18 and 24. And a certain Jew named Apostle Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scripture came to Ephesus. And this was instructed in the way of the Lord being fervent in the spirit he spake and thought diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and they took him aside and expounded. And when they, uh, uh, verse 27, when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, see, brother wrote a recommendation exhorting the disciple to receive him. So Paul used to write, others used to write a letter of recommendation, you know. 
But here Paul says, not me here in Corinthian, no. Especially you, you to Corinthian, I don't need any recommendation from anybody, even from uh, Peter or John or anybody, no. I don't need any recommendation. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, we will see further because this is a very much important but today as we have read and understood are we an epistle of Christ you know do we, people read us you know very much important our life should be like known and read of all men we should be a reading bible the world needs to see the gospel in my life okay not in this bible is okay but people are not even if you teach them and if they read it and we go and tell them our Christ, but my life is not right. They will not accept this Bible or what things it is, but they have to see my life. So may the Lord speak with us and I will hand it over to 